One of the emergency situations that I'm concerned about due to the region that I live in are tsunamis. A tsunami is a series of ocean waves that are caused by underwater earthquakes, landslides, or volcanic eruptions. These waves could reach heights of over 100 feet. Several years ago, I created a prototype of my life vest survival kit, which provided me with some items that I could use for flooding and for tsunami survival. The first version was more of a prototype, so over the past several years, I've been including this life vest survival kit whenever we're going near water, especially the ocean. I find the ocean to be an extremely intimidating place to be at. There's no stopping it. But over the years, I've been making some modifications to my life vest survival kit, and now I think I'm ready to rebrand it as my tsunami survival kit. After all, that's what I'm most concerned about, tsunamis. So in this video, we're briefly going to discuss tsunamis and then go over all the items that are included in this tsunami survival kit. Let's get started. <music> I live in the greater Seattle area, which is a part of the Pacific Ocean's Ring of Fire. This is where 80% of tsunamis happen at. If you're ever at the ocean and you see the water recede, don't stare at it and admire the beauty, hightail it out of there, because most likely a tsunami's coming. The first wave of the tsunami usually isn't the strongest either. The waves will just get bigger and stronger and keep on coming. Whenever I'm by the ocean, I always look for those tsunami evacuation signs, because like Obi-Wan Kenobi, I wanna find the high ground. You don't have a whole lot of time when a tsunami is about to occur because they could travel at 500 miles an hour, which is almost as fast as a jet airplane. They say that if you happen to get caught in a tsunami, the best thing to do is not try to swim, but try to grab on something and hold on. Just let the current carry you. Now, if you happen to get caught in a tsunami that was generated by a giant meteor impact, like in the movie Deep Impact, you're pretty much done for. So my tsunami survival kit isn't intended for that extreme of a situation, but it's designed to provide me with a level of assistance to try to make it through. It could also be used for general flooding, which also could happen. While I am concerned about flooding, tsunamis are just much scarier. Again, because the ocean is extremely scary. I have my tsunami survival kit largely stored in a personal flotation device, otherwise known as a life vest. So we're gonna go through all the items that are stored inside of the life vest. I also have a few additional items that go with this life vest to provide me with more protection and methods of aid. As always, I've included a PDF document. You could download it by clicking the link in the description box below. It has a list of all the items that are gonna be covered in this video, including links to those items if you happen to wanna buy any of them for yourself. I purchased most of the items for this particular survival kit from Amazon or at local marine supply stores. Let's get down into the details. Let's start off first with the life vest itself. The one I'm going with is the Mustang Survival Classic Industrial Vest with four pockets and reflective tape. This is a Type 3 PFD, which stands for Personal Flotation Device. These are specifically designed for open water where a rescue will likely occur quickly. They're designed to keep you in a vertical position, but it's the wearer's responsibility to maneuver themselves into a face-up position. Type 3 PFDs will keep an unconscious wearer face-up just as well as a Type 2 vest. This Mustang Survival PFD fits me well and features large armholes and reflective tape on the shoulders for high visibility at night. If you're floating in the water at night and someone has a flashlight, the reflective tape will really make you more visible. You even have some D-rings on it for lanyard attachments. I found this particular model to work perfect for this Tsunami Survival Kit. Before going through all the items that are stored inside of the life vest, let's talk about some head protection. One of the main causes of injury during flooding is from debris. So I've included the ProTech Classic Skate Helmet. I've done a lot of testing of this particular helmet. This one's really popular with the skating community. Yeah, it looks a little bit dorky, but this helmet will protect my head from debris in case of flooding or a tsunami. You could use something like a bump cap insert in one of your baseball caps, but I like that this particular helmet has extra protection and a chin strap so it won't easily fall off. Again, the ProTech Classic Skate Helmet. I have a few items attached to the zipper of the life vest itself. The first one being a whistle. It's good to have an audible signal device for marine purposes. This particular one is the Jet Logic whistle with lanyard. This high pitched peeless whistle could clip onto your life jacket and it could even double as a floating keychain. That's right, it is floatable. Again, the Jet Logic whistle with lanyard. Also attached to that same zipper is the Rescue Me original keychain car escape tool, made in America. I have a lot of these rescue me's all over the place, including in our vehicles. Most flood related drownings occur with people trapped in vehicles. This tool is specifically designed to break the tempered glass window of vehicle doors. Make sure that you press it against the corners of the window, not the middle, because that section of the window is designed to break easily. It also includes a razor blade that you could use for cutting your seat belts off, just in case you get stuck in them. These little tools are awesome, and I highly recommend picking up a few of them for yourself. Again, the Rescue Me Original Keychain Car Escape Tool. 
Let's start going through all of the pockets now, starting off first with the top pockets. In the first pocket, I have a Sharpie. In an emergency situation, you may need to write medical information on an injured person's skin to help with responders. You can include information like time of incident and medical conditions. Again, one Sharpie. The next item is a waterproof cell phone case. Your cell phone's gonna be your number one method for signaling. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you keep it protected from the water so you could use the phone, text, internet, or GPS. I've tried out a few different brands for these particular ones. They all work basically the same. Since I lost the original one of my prototype life vest, I'm now going with the Johto Universal Waterproof Pouch. It's IPX8, which stands for Ingress Protection Rating, and X8 is the highest rating you could get. Once you put your cell phone on here, you're able to go completely underwater without it being impacted by the water. Again, a waterproof cell phone dry bag. The next item in that particular pocket is an auto strobe light. This one's a little hard to find nowadays, but it's the UST Marine See Me Auto Strobe Light. This particular light is specifically designed as a marine rescue beacon. When it's set to auto, it will automatically turn on when in water. So even if you are unconscious, this beacon can alert rescuers of your location in the dark. Once it detects water, it will turn on. I've been pretty impressed with this particular model as I've been using it for several years on the same battery. And just this last summer, I happened to tip my kayak when we were on vacation in Sun River, Oregon. And guess what turned on? That's right, the UST Marine See Me Auto Strobe Light. There are other brands that you could get of this particular type of strobe light, but the one I have is the UST Marine See Me. Now let's start going through the items in that second top pocket. The items that I have in here are largely for hypothermia purposes. If you were caught in a tsunami or in flooding, one of the common after effects when being in that cold ocean water is hypothermia. So the first item included is a space blanket. This particular one is the Swiss Safe Emergency Mylar Thermal Blanket. You could get cheaper space blankets, but this one is of good quality and won't rip as easily as some of the cheaper ones will. I also like that it's in the color orange so I could use it for signaling purposes as well. Again, the space blanket is included to help prevent hypothermia after being in the water for an extended period of time. Mylar blankets do a great job of helping your body retain its warmth. In that same pocket, I also have a few hot hand warmers to help warm the hands after a flooding situation. Also included in that same pocket is a signal mirror. This is the inexpensive Koglin's Featherweight Mirror. A signal mirror is a reflective device that uses the sun or other light source to send light signal to a secondary party. Signal mirrors are very popular due to their ability to send silent signals long distances without any electronics or moving parts. And those are all the items that are stored in that top pocket. Now let's move on to the bottom pockets of the life vest. In both bottom pockets, I carry some fresh water. So I have a couple Daytrix emergency water packets. These water pouches are designed to be used on lifeboats. They have a five year shelf life. And while all the water that you'd be dealing with during flooding or a tsunami would be dirty water, it's nice to have some fresh water on hand for drinking or for cleaning wounds. These water packets are very easy to store too. So it's very easy to squeeze them into various locations like these pockets. The next item included is for first aid purposes. I have one Israeli battle dressing. It's a six inch compression bandage. I previously had a CPR mask in this particular pocket, but I decided to switch it out for the Israeli battle dressing. I thought it provided me with more capabilities. Plus with CPR nowadays, you could just go with compressions. These things are pretty awesome and they could be used for a wide range of applications. You could put them on your head, leg, arm, torso, or anywhere else on the body. It's primarily designed to help staunch blood flow by applying pressure to the wound, but it could also be used for constructing a sling, to bind a sprain, to secure splints to a broken limb, or even as an improvised tourniquet. Again, an Israeli battle dressing compression bandage. I also have one chemical light stored in the bottom of this pocket. This could be used for signaling purposes. All you have to do is break it, shake it up, and now you have a chemical reaction that provides illumination in the dark. You could use this both for illumination and for signaling. Again, one chem light. The primary item that I have in that second bottom pocket is some rope. This is a paracord rescue rope that was created by Matt from Custom Paracord Creation. He designed this rescue rope specifically for this project several years ago. And I have it included to be able to attach myself to a stable object like a tree or to another person like one of my kids during a flooding or tsunami situation. If I really needed to, I could extend it to a much greater distance to fully leverage the paracord. On one end of the rope, I've included a waterproof camera float in bright yellow. This camera float is attached to the rescue rope to avoid it from sinking in water due to the weight of the carabiners. It also provides a nice grab handle for someone. I've been doing a lot of testing of this particular rope over the years during kayaking trips, and it really works great. Again, the rescue rope with carabiners and a camera float.
Also stored in that pocket, I have a flashlight. Since I'm not always using this Tsunami survival kit, it oftentimes just sits in the garage until I know that I'm going to be by water. However, I still wanted to include a flashlight and I wanted to ensure that if an emergency happened that that flashlight would absolutely work, no matter if it's been sitting for a few months or even a couple years. So the one flashlight brand that I trust for that type of situation has to be made by Surefire. This is the Surefire G2X Pro dual output LED flashlight. I have it in yellow for bright visibility. These flashlights are made in America. They're top of the line in terms of quality and they're very reliable. I'm still trying to figure out the best way of adding a floater to this particular flashlight in case I drop it during flooding. But again, this is the one that I wanted to go with for this particular kit because I absolutely trust it to work. Again, the Surefire G2X. Attached to the side of the life vest, I have a knife. This is the Cross River Saltwater Fixed Blade Knife made by Gerber. As you can see, it has a blunt tip, which is specifically designed for marine purposes. It's optimized to withstand harsh saltwater environments with added corrosion resistant protection. This is a full tang three inch stainless steel blade that has both fine edge and flat edge serrations. It has an ambidextrous trigger lock that releases this fishing knife quickly from the sheath. This knife is pretty awesome, but I do know that the sheath isn't built to last, so I'm currently looking for a different option for the sheath itself. But I wanted to have some kind a blade on me in case I needed to cut rope or other material during an emergency situation. And those are all of the items that are stored directly on the life vest itself. In addition to the life vest itself, I also have an add-on module for my Tsunami survival kit. While I do have some rescue rope stored inside of the pockets of my life vest, I still want to have more rescue rope. So I've included the NRS standard rescue throw rope. Before talking about the throw rope itself, I carry a few additional items in this nice storage bag. The first one being a water filter. This is the Life Straw Personal Water Filter. This filter protects against 99.999% of bacteria, parasites, microplastics, as well as sand, dirt, and cloudiness. The Life Straw weighs less than two ounces, so it's extremely lightweight, and the long-lasting membrane microfilter will last up to 4,000 liters of water. So while I still have some water packets in my life vest, if I need to drink more water, and if we're dealing with fresh water flooding, I could use the Life Straw personal water filter. For emergency signaling, I also have an Orion Orange handheld smoke flare stored in the bag. These are often stored in boats for daytime emergency signaling, and they're activated using a standard striking firing mechanism that produces a dense orange smoke for 60 seconds of daylight distress signaling purposes. In the water, it's visible for up to five miles, and it's US Coast Guard approved. Again, the Orion Orange handheld smoke flare for daytime signaling. These are all stored in the bag with the NRS standard rescue throw rope. This throw rope is commonly used for whitewater rafting for rescue purposes. It includes 75 feet of rope. Internal foam flotation keeps the bag on top of the water where you need it for rescue purposes. It also has a barrel lock drawstring that has a flared nylon top for smoother throws plus easy reloading and closure. The rope has a tensile strength of 1900 pounds and the mesh bag allows for quick drying when you reel the rope back in. Again, the NRS standard rescue throw rope. And those are all of the items that are currently stored as part of my Tsunami survival kit. While I hope to never have to go through a Tsunami, I do feel that the items that are stored in this particular Tsunami survival kit would provide me with a set of capabilities that I wouldn't normally have without it. At the very least, I think it's good for everyone to have some personal flotation devices available for every member of their family. I also have some additional items that are specific for flooding in my vehicles, such as having a rescue me available for every passenger in the vehicle, in addition to some personal flotation devices that I also keep in the vehicles. Yeah, when you wear the life vest and the helmet, it does look a little dorky, but I'd rather look a little dorky and survive than look cool and not. As I mentioned earlier, there's a link to a PDF document that I've included in the description box below. It has a list of all the items that were covered in this video. Please feel free to leave any kind of comments below in the comment section regarding this video. What type of preps would you want to have for your own Tsunami Survival Kit? Leave those comments below in the comment section and stay tuned for more emergency preparedness videos. See you next time.